Royal Majesty or Tom Four Say Tutu, the second cordially represented. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I won't bore you with pointers from what the other speakers have said. I bow to superior knowledge. However, I've been asked the question as to why I was told to speak on Ghana as an attractive investment destination in Africa. And my answer was simply because of globalization. And so what is globalization? Some of you might want to ask me. Allow me to demonstrate this. Our most common placed headlines seem to reek of globalization. Just take it two decades ago about the tragic death of Princess Diana. An English princess with a Welsh title leaves a French hotel with an Egyptian companion who has supplanted a Pakistani. They get into a German car with a Dutch engine that is driven by a Belgian chauffeur full of Scottish whiskey. They are then chased by Italian paparazzi on Japanese-built scooters and more bikes into a Swiss-built churn tunnel where they crash. Their rescue is briefly attempted by an American doctor using Brazilian medicine, and the whole story is told to you in Ghana by myself from South Africa. That is globalization, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> now, in the information age in which we live today, it is often the side which has the better story, not the side with a bigger army which wins. So for the purposes of this particular speech, I will turn and convert this particular seating into a boardroom. Since I'm speaking to busy people, some of whom, of course, are geopolitical analysts, I have been privileged to listen to, and your patience is naturally limited because of lunch. I would, you would want to know exactly what you can take away from listening to me. I thought I would make it worthwhile by just pointing out a few areas of concern. I know that I will be accused of being the votary of some sort of Africa world domination, rather like Pax Romana or Prax Britannica, perish the thought. All I mean is Ghana will be the epitome in many ways of the kind of approach that will privilege the development of cooperative relations among its countries in an increasingly networked and multipolar world. Ghana remains one of the top 10 attractive destinations in Africa with strong growth rates focused around the oil and gas sector, while the non-oil sector growth is supported by pro-business reforms. Ghana's Ministry of Finance predicted an economic growth of 7.6% this year. In April 2018, the IMF, of course, reduced this from an 8.9% estimated to a 6.3%. According to World Bank, <clears throat> the lack of in efficient infrastructure shaves up to 2.6%, of Afri African average per capita growth rate and places a significant strain on human development. The African Development Bank's most recent estimation of infrastructure needs is between 130 billion US dollars and 170 billion US dollars annually. Ghana in 2011 became the fast growing economy in the world, soaring to a north high of 14% that year, 8.2, excluding oil. Through growth slow paced into 2011, Ghana has outperformed West Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa regional growth rates since. With better performance of the mining and retail sectors, following its peaceful elections, the country's GDP growth improved to 4.5% in 2016 from 3.5% in 2015. Underlying the rapid growth, in the information and communication and the finance and insurance subsectors is mobile communications. On the back of increasing network internet literacy and mobile finance, rising mobile data usage is propelling this particular sector. For over a decade now, Ghana has faced persistent twin deficits due to fiscal mismanagement. However, it is faced with the task of balancing between staying true to its ambitious manifesto commitments and implementing fiscal consolidation. Underscored by limited legal and security risks, Ghana provides a relatively more competitive operating environment compared to other key economies in the region. Ghana is actually located less than 10 hours by plane from Europe, South Africa, the US, the UAE, and holding two of West Africa's major seaports. Ghana is also well positioned geographically for trade in the region. 
forming out of 110 airports in the world and 500 domestic airports, Ghana is part of the 23 members that has signed on to the AU Agenda 2063 single African air transport market, allowing it to trade with its partners. Over the past decade, economic policy reforms have seen barriers to trade and investment decrease in Ghana and yielded significant growth in trade and FDI inflows. <clears throat> Global information and climate assessments, such as the World Bank's ease of doing business, indicates that Ghana moved up three places to rank 108 in 2016 from 111 in 2015 out of 190 countries. Ghana also ranked 111th out of 137 countries in the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index. As part of the British Enabling Environment Program, 18 in 2016, the number of formal firms registered by 1.5 percent with 60,230 registered compared to 2015. Ghana has performed fairly well on Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, where it ranked 56th out of 168 countries. Ghana as well boasts a number of advantages for manufacturers, including access to 300 million consumers in the ECOWAS market, competitive level costs, and a host of ma raw material inputs. Further pressing challenges for firms operating in the country include weak access to competitive financing, a bit of tax rates and corruption, intermittent foreign exchange withdrawal limits, and high inflation. Although there have been recent improvements, another major business environment concern, however not big, is the intermittent power shortages. Ghana has improved over the last few years from 64% in 2012 and is much higher than the sub-Saharan Africa average of 35%, which according to a 2015 GSS report, power outages saw the country lose an average of 2.2 million US dollars in output per day. While the government is working to further streamline the sector and increase installed capacity to improve efficiency and ensure supply, it is also looking for private partners to assist with securing funding and reforming a number of its core power projects and institutions. Complementing its advantageous geographical location, Ghana has had a number of trade policy reforms that are focused on improving the competitiveness of exporting companies, helping them to diversify their exports and penetrate new markets. As FDI continues to play an important role in Ghana's economic development, the government is placing an emphasis on public-private partnerships and multilateral and bilateral investment agreements for the development of key infrastructure and other projects. In regard to the same, as of July 2017, Ghana has signed the bilateral investment treaties with 27 countries in total, 19 of which are awaiting enforcement. In the first quarter of 2017, policies and programs such as One District, One Factory, Planting for Food and Jobs, the Accra Marine Drive and tax reforms in the 2017 budget statement have bolstered investor confidence. Beyond the 2017 budget provisions, a number of incentives are provided under the GIPC and the Free Zones Act, the constitutional guarantee investment laws which guarantee 100% transfer of profits and dividends, multilateral investment guarantee agencies, the MEGA membership, the BITs and the DTAs. Ghana's tax code is replete with tax concessions that considerably reduce the effective tax rate for both foreign and local firms. Now, what does this mean in practice? Just purely looking at the demographic trends and the recent policies, which would merit a certain allowance of belief that for the next 10 to 20 years, Ghana could be, and one could argue should be, a productive, sustainable investment return economy at a time when the rest of the world is regressing. So far from geographical location, Ghana needs to give a compelling narrative to the world. However, in closing, my thought was this. We have all heard a couple of terms used quite widely during the period of the last two days, one of it being change and transformation. So I leave this room for you to argue by yourself. Are we looking for a Ghana that has changed its perception of the investment climate, or are we looking at a Ghana that has transformed its position of the investment climate? Now, I beg your indulgence in the two words. Change is what happens to a tadpole before it becomes a frog. 
it is still a frog. Transformation is what happens to a caterpillar when it turns into a butterfly. So are we a Ghana that is creating frog products for a butterfly market? Or are we a Ghana that has completely transformed the whole idea around the investment climate? So I will leave you while paraphrasing Victor Hugo, no power on earth can stop an idea whose time has come, and so has Ghana's.